We're live! And not only that, we have Wi-Fi this week. Exciting! And not only that, the camera looks like it's working. I apologize very sincerely. We are here with Amuna is our future with inner healing. It's something which has to come from within. And we're so excited that we managed to get everything working. Thank God the Wi-Fi looks good. Just getting the YouTube up and running. Yes, we're good. And I want to thank the good lords. Well, we hope it's good. <laughs> Would you believe it? It's playing games. Okay, good. So that's part of the fun that during this class, we thank God have all many ways that we record. And that's why you see me looking over here, over there, making sure that the podcast is good for Brez of Israel. And we have now on SoundCloud, as we've mentioned, Brez of English, and as well on our YouTube and Facebook, which right now the Facebook is playing games. But Baruch Hashem, overall, everything seems to be good. And we're after a beautiful, beautiful night with Nariel, Uriel, Rabbi Yonatan Atias and his brothers, Michal and Uriel and the other brothers who weren't able to make it and other members of the band. But please God, we'll have them come again, the full band, just like we're always praying for this end of this Corona challenge so we can do in-person events. In the meanwhile, it's still keeping it small and holy the way it needs to be right now during keeping the rules and everything. But thank God, we're back in person. It's so exciting and it looks like everything is working. Got the sanitizer and we're moving ahead full as the Rav spoke about Corona last night, Rashad Morish, our host, who was sitting right here, spoke about very important things, and you should definitely check out the share from last night because not only was the music uplifting, inspiring, and soulful, like we're always aiming for, but the content was very important right now. It was the first time Rav Shalom Morish ever spoke about the Corona challenge, and really, just to say it simply, he said to wait and to pray. Those two things. That's what I've been saying to everyone who's been asking me since um, since this uh, question came up with the vaccine and everything, is to wait and pray. So that's what we're holding at. Thank God I have the antibodies. I was okay to have the coronavirus without even knowing about it. I think it was at the beginning, this time last year. Purim was when I caught it. That's how I feel because I was a little bit sick but not enough to uh, go to the hospital and check it out and then we were in quarantine anyway for six weeks hopefully this Purim we will not be in quarantine we're having that inner healing that's going on that will heal the people from within and we won't have to go through these external blocks anymore that's what we're praying for that says that Purim and Pesach are Gula Samech Gula I mentioned it last night at the end of the class but this concept is the redemption is connected very deeply into the special time of Purim that we find ourselves coming towards in a week and a half. Unbelievable. Yes, this week is already Zion Adda. It's my wife's Yom Yeledet, my soulmate. She, her name is Masha, which is connected to Moshe. We have the beautiful um, Yotzai and Yom Yeledet of Moshe Rabbeinu, who's 120. He was the 120 that we all wish each other. Admeh Ve'esrim. And he was complete in his years, just like I pray for my wife also should have all those blessings of Moshe Rabbeinu and the Torah, should have all those blessings of, of Rotson, which is Gematria, her name, the will to do the will of Hashem, to be happy and joyful and all the good things that come with that. Now, we are talking about inner healing. So I did bring an extract from my book, United Souls, and it's something which is generally going to be a very big challenge for people nowadays to really go within because you have a very externalized world wow excellent we have a phone a song sing song ah what a unbelievable who would have imagined we had this opportunity today to uh have a sing song in the middle of a class good job sound guy <laughs> Every week something happens and it's all about working on our midas and being able to go ahead on our character traits because when things go wrong, that means you're doing something important. That's very important. It's a cloud. It's a rule. Any maniot is a, is a simon, is a sign that you're doing something very special. And as the Rav said, sometimes last night there's going to be things that are things that hold you back and there's some things that are saying, no, this is not what you're meant to be doing. But this 
constant being held back in some way or another, these limitations that keep coming on us throughout this whole Corona challenge and throughout recording all these classes. This is because these classes are important, not because they're not good, but because they're important. So I appreciate everyone sticking it out and going ahead together. And thank God, like I said, I'm putting together this United Souls book for everyone, not just for myself. And I began with the concept during Shogavim, which we just reached the climax. And as we approach Pasha's Truma and Pasha's Zohar, we're getting rid of all our doubts, all the Amalek, all the inner voices that hold us back from being the true potential we can be, the true soul that we have as a gift within every one of us. Our soul is given us to us every day. It's put into our being a new portion of soul. We've mentioned this before. And every day we have an opportunity to work with that little God spark of godliness that's put inside of us and that soul. And really to understand that the soul is limitless. There's no limit on that soul level. And we can take that with us. And once we're in tune with that and we're worked through all the different blocks that keep us from being more soulful then we have the power through the soul to come to our more inner experience of what life is about and it's really interesting if you look around the world and how now there's this whole internet reality that wasn't really around when I was growing up as a little kid you know the first 20 years of my life it wasn't really a, a presence of internet and we we did have TV we had videos there was things preparing us for this where we're at now like Game Boys and stuff like that that we'd play on and get us used to this technological world that was coming but now say the last 20 years it's in a way like we're living like literally I'm zooming through I don't have anyone sitting in the studio other than that phone that just went off from the camera guy we don't have any like any person present and yet we're living through technology and experiencing life through technology and this is a, once again a preparation for what's coming in the next 20 years with VR, virtual reality and AI, AR and all this stuff going that's going to be coming which is going to really change how we experience life even more than we're going through right now but we have to understand that on the inner level and we've mentioned this before we have the soul level which is no matter what and when you listen say Joe Rogan and and uh, he had the Tesla guy what's his name come on guys you got to help me out I got to hear your feedback you know I, oh shalom yes people are saying stuff from Sydney Australia awesome who's the guy that's the Tesla guy come on give me the name it just went out of my head for some reason um, anyway, whatever his name is, he very nicely spoke with J Joe Rogan on his podcast about what coming attractions, you know, Neuralinks and all the space links and this and that and all this crazy new futuristic technology. Like, you know, we used to look, we look at these sci-fi movies, it's actually happening. And it's amazing to think that, you know, we're part of a society which can now develop tools to almost heal how if someone who can't see can almost see now someone who can't hear can almost hear like it's it's messianic you know it's 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 huge revelations of wisdom that was talked about in the times of the Baal Shem Tov who were coming down oh here's a friend maybe you could tell me the night the guy who owns Tesla I've forgotten his name I don't know why it went out of my head it's one of the people out there <laughs> just write his name underneath I'd appreciate it but say you have the opportunity like in when there's such as revelation of wisdom and that's what the Baal Shem Tov foresaw he he said that there'll be this industrial revolution, there'll be this, uh, and that's how it manifested externally until now with the technological revolution. And then we have right now the opportunity to to really tune into the soul level much more than ever, that there's an, a whole world, world of ballet tshuva, there's a whole world of people who can share wisdom, inner wisdom, Torah, spirituality that never was before revealed in such open ways, in such open languages, because there's always that balance between light and darkness as much as the world sped up materially, there was a tremendous impact of spirituality from an inner place, from the internal level, and that kind of revelation that's going on, we can see in this week's Pasha and Truma that there's a concept of a Mikdash Ma'at, of this small temple, this this miniature temple that we build within, Mishranti Besocham, that it should be something that goes inside of us, that we should build that dwelling place for spirituality within inside us. Elon Musk, there we go. Someone's listening. Thank you, Yosef David Avram. Should be blessed. The Elon Musk is a, an example of someone who's a genius in the technological world. And he was talking to Joe Rogan, and I'll tie it again back to what we're talking about with the base of English and the Mishkan and how each person has that dwelling place within that he was talking about 
about like uh, that we need emotions that that's the best he could say because you know with whatever i don't know we're not talking on him but yeah thank you we're not talking on him but we're uh, we're talking about the concepts that he brought out on the podcast of joe rogan that this need to understand so if world is going to speed up speed up so intensely and we're not talking about like hundreds of years down the road we're talking about very soon and in our lifetime please god that there's and mashiach's coming as well so that's going to get even more interesting but what is with the answer to ai and you know where everything's going to be very influenced by what like the social dilemma pointed out and all these kind of documentaries are revealing that we're in a actually very complicated experience of life nowadays that technologically emotionally we're not so sure what how we are being impacted by all these transitions and for example the corona challenge even more so and they're discussing it right now how does it affect our emotional well-being our mental well-being how does it affect our children the new generation where they're much more inside they're much more on technology it's a whole transformation that you know i never had you know i never had that kind of childhood where i was able to text people and whatsapp people and watch videos like on a phone whatever i wanted it was all controlled by you know tv i'd say so they said there's people who still nowadays thank god who are able to protect themselves in technology but you know there's a very small minority of the world and those excuse me those small amount of people who are doing that are able to thank god you know function still but it looks like long term even they're gonna have to on some level figure out some way of dealing with technology because it's becoming very intrusive it's not something you can just say no because if your fridge is going to have to work off an internet link at some point and you're going to have to shop through internet like amazon shop or however it's going to work when you go with your trolley and everything's going to have to go through back onto your card which is on your phone you can't just have one of those dumb phones or whatever they call them like maybe they're the real smartphones but the point is you can't have disconnection to technology on some level it's going to be it's invasive it's going to be part of our life and therefore we have to rather than run away from the challenge which is my belief we have to embrace the challenge just like with the corona challenge and we have to learn how to have amuna and betochen and have that inner connection that trust and intrinsic belief in a, in the power of the soul to be able to deal with anything the, the truth of the soul this is the answer to Elon Musk and Joe Rogan and people should let them know if you know them please give them a give them a bell send, send them a text or something say there's a guy out there saying he has the answer to your dilemma that there's a soul and Rav Oresh has been talking about it for you know since I've been reading his books over 20 something years it's this Amuna it's, it's about having the light of the Neshama of creation that there was put into creation on the inner level on the inner world that there's a whole inner sanctuary within us that in that inner sanctuary in our home there's that place of connection it's very important to learn this when you learn with the Parsha's Truma this week and Parsha's Tetzave and then um, we have Kisisa the Labor Deca Parsha with Purim and everything and then we have again Parsha's Viaka Pukudi these are the Parsha's a climax the Sefer of Redemption the Book of Redemption Shmos this Exodus this Redemptive's book is within it is giving us the tools to be able to go into the new generation the new world that we're about to enter as time goes on this world of Mashiach this world of incredible technology and wisdom that we can't imagine and when the, what we're touching on right now is just the tip of shabayam same with the toyre the have we're just touching on a tiny drop of how deep and intense and spiritual and empowering and energizing the soul level and the spiritual levels are within the toyre we're just touching on the on the tiny little bit of the deeper drop of the sea uh, that's how little we're tasting right now to understand we're ikhvas the mashika we're very insensitive to what the tremendous revelations that are happening right now the Hashem is revealing so much you sit next to Rav Oresh, you get a little insight if you're Zoka, if you have a heart open a little bit you sit next to a holy person my Rebbe Tolna in Jerusalem you sit next to these holy people and the Simcha the joy and you talk with them and you see that they're on a different plane of sensitivity to really what's going on they're experiencing things in a different le- wavelength of understanding of Mochen the Godless of a awareness and then there's levels and levels of that and in the Mishkan that was on the ultimate level of revelation of how Hashem wanted us to create a dwelling in this world remember this is important concepts that's brought down in Chabad Svarim the idea of Dira Tachtona and it comes from the Zohar Kodesh that we have to make this 
place, this world, a dwelling place for godliness, for spirituality. And that's going to be the same with the phones and the same with the computers and the same with virtuality and everything that we encounter. Every single kind of food and essential experience has within it godliness. We've mentioned this before, the idea of the yud K. That there's, there's divine names within everything, achila, yud and hay. When we eat, it's got yud and hay inside the word ocho, achila, shena. Yeah, Lena, every single kind of experience yeah, that we have physically, we're experiencing the Yud and the K. They have to understand that. And the mitzvah is with the Vav and the K, and same with Torah, Vav and the K. And the idea is, like in this week's Pasha and Pasha's Zoho, when we get rid of Amalek, we have to make the Kisei Shalom of the Yud and the K have to become one with the Vav and the K. And that's a Yichud, that's a unification. That's what we've been talking about with United Souls, bringing out this unification. And when we go into our home, a Mishkan, which is a Mishkan Ma'at, is this small miniature temple. We're experiencing there what it is like to have an Aaron Kodesh, a holy place of Panemius, of inner Panemius, as it talks about in this week's Pasha, that there's different levels, the gold outside, the gold within, and then there's the, the woods, to understand that the, the whole concept of how the Aaron Kodesh was built, the eight it was built on different levels and the Kruvim, this idea of these angelic beings communicating and bring, bringing, bringing the, the, the Shekhinah's way of Edabah but was speaking within that place and coming through the Sino, this pipeline of spirituality to reveal in the world the Esaluchas, the Ten Commandments that were hidden within this Aaron Kodesh and that represents the Tamachochim, a wise person. Th- these concepts are real. This is not just something that was in the Torah years ago. This is something very inner within each human being is made in divine image and there's this inner temple within each person and within each home there's an ability to manifest that Aaron Kodesh this holy Aaron this holy divine experience within each person that was the real the goal of Tmashanti Basokham that ideally it shouldn't just be in one place in the base of English, this third temple that we're praying for, but within each person's home. Each person themselves should be like a Kohen, should have the concept of priesthood and have the ability to serve on the highest, highest levels. That was the initial attempt of bringing or initial attempt, let's say initial kavana, attend intention of creation that every human being should himself or herself have that ability to bring down Shoshashkina into their homes, that, that dwelling place of divinity into their homes so that everything makes sense, everything has fulfillment, everything has meaning, everything has depth. When you experience something physical, it's not just passing, it's something which is eternal and you because ex- you're experiencing it on its essence. Everything has a name on its essence. Everything has a oneness. Everything is bound up with its ultimate oneness. This is the kind of experience when you take an Aaron Kodesh and you have that concept or you take a, the Lechem upon him, these, these 12 breads, this represents Panasa and the Torah, rep- the, the Aaron Kodesh represents spirituality and, and the inner content of everything. And then you have the Menorah and this represents the light that's manifesting from all this avoda. And you have the basamim, the, the katoiris, the, the beautiful smell the person should generate in their home, the nachas ruach, this, this unpleasant smell of this atmosphere. <clears throat> when you live in your house, it should be an atmosphere that's encouraging and inspiring and should empower the people. And same too with the Aaron Kodesh, this is a, in this Kruvim, this is a place of Kodesh Kadoshim. this is a place of, of oneness, of unification. And this is where, like, for a husband and wife, for intimate, to understand these are all very deep concepts of intimacy in the home is representative of this Aaron Kodesh. That's where we pray towards this intimate Yichud, unification between us and Hashem, this oneness on the deepest levels. And then to understand understand how it manifests outwards, like we said, to the Lechem upon him and the Menorah and to this Ketoyeris, and it manifests into all these Korbanas, when the Mizbeach, and the Mizbeach is in a human being, a person's mind, it says in the, in the Me'iri, is represented Mishkan Ma'at, the Mikdash Ma'at, this microcosm comes into each human being that we have in ourselves in Aaron Kodesh and we have in ourselves an ability to bring down this kind of Shoresh Shechina through, and the Menorah, the face we already spoke about is the Menorah and the idea of concepts of lechem upon him, this idea of panasa, bringing it into our life and into the mizbeach, into our human 
existence to realize that every person is a walking temple in a certain level has ability to sacrifice their their desires for Hashem their physicality for spirituality and to elevate everything around every experience we have in this world to understand how spiritual what the Torah was saying to us and how practical how it comes into our eating and our drinking and how we function as people because for example if a person's not being straight and honest in business yeah if a person is getting caught up in their own agendas like in politics and we spoke about this online you're busy with your communication your agenda your party rah 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 and you're all into that so then you're no longer being true to yourself you're no longer being true to your essence which is connected to this beautiful Aaron Kodish and this oneness and this true spirituality that's within each of us and this is the idea that you start to feel like a Corbin base of English the idea of the destruction of the base of English now you start to understand it's very real to yourself because it's your own heart is broken your own mind is is poisoned with with rubbish with narish kite you're no longer accessing the full potential of your soul and your and your ability to be a godly person in your own home your own home is now like a place of god forbid of of fire of what of, of war of of dispute and that's the opposite of building a home of tranquility and a place where everything has a place a home where every everything is organized is like we say on Seder night everything's Peseda say that everything has its place so too with our learning we have that's why I'm writing a book is to take all these concepts and bring them into real time so they'll have the United Souls book we have the ability to understand that there's enough universal meeting points and places of connection. I put it in a little extract underneath. You can read it. How we review our gym. We have to go over this last 2020 year, 2021 year, and it's really internalized. As before we get to Purim, we have to think like we were writing a Megillah, our own Megillah, Megillah of the year. We have to write our own our own review of what just happened this whole year of the months. When we're heading to the last month of the the month calendar we started in Chodesh Nissan, we have to write a review. What just happened? Not just like Rosh Hashanah. That's a different kind of judgment. That's a judgment on our income and other things. But this year, it's Rosh Hashanah of Chodoshim. It's Rosh Hashanah of Malachim. That's, that's Rosh Chodesh Nissan that we're preparing for during the month of Chodesh Ada. That's why we have these Dalit Pashas of Shkolim and Zoho and Para and Chodesh. Yeah, these are the four Pashas, the Dalit Pashas, which also connect to the Yud Kevavke, which is also connected to the Indian of making Yechudim unifications through these four special parshas with Purim in the middle. Purim is the is the ability to collate, to elevate this whole Chodesh, to bring down that need for revelation of miracles and salvations in the physical world. That's the whole concept of Megillah. It's Esther, revealing in the hiddenness such revelations. That's how we have to understand. These are very deep ideas, but the concept of your life is to get in touch with that soul level so you can start to see when you hear a Megillah, you know, just hearing a cute story about Esther and Mordechai, Homan and Zeresh and all these interesting people and you know, it's nice political intrigue like a Trump story or something but it's, no, it's much more than that it's, it's so deep and it's so affecting how our life is right now to understand that when we read them again on the night of Purim, which is only next Thursday night for the whole world, including Jerusalem we're having such an awe comes down, I remember being by Rossi Meyer Zilberberg and during his Megillah and the energy and the feeling, the experience Experience of reading a Megillah, Megillah's Esther, that he was dancing, everything was happening right now to him that moment. And the whole year was mapped out through the Megillah, through this revelation of light that comes through this holy book and each person himself as it says should have their own Megillah each person needs to understand Rabbi Tatsuma brought this down once you need to have your own understanding of what just happened this year so then you can pull a new year with the second Korea Megillah in the daytime when you're bringing now you've gone through what was now you can pray for what is and the whole Megillah really is a Bakasha is a prayer Esther's talking to Hashem, is talking to Hashem Keli, Keli, Zama, Zavtani and all these beautiful words that go on throughout the Megillah, these beseeching and this 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 prayer throughout the Megillah, like David HaMelech, Ani Tefillah, the I Am Prayer that someone who is constantly every day of life, experiencing life as a prayer, rather than taking it personally seeing it as an opportunity to connect to the Creator 
do you have experience of work connect to the creator the phone thing this thing that thing that thing it's all Hashem it's all about correct, connecting more to our soul to becoming better people to having more mercy and compassion and understanding Kedalia talks a lot about this right now he's been talking a lot about the beautiful Sefer Tommy Devora he said this concept in that Sefer and from from the Ramchal um, sorry not the Ramchal from the um, I think it's from the Ramchal is a different tzaddik. That's the Derech Hashem and we see like Yisharim. Come and someone here help me. What's the sefer of the Tom and Devor? Some read Ramak. Yeah, the Ramak. So the Ramak there, he he brings down this concept that Hashem's constantly helping us through midas, through attributes, divine attributes. He wants us to be merciful. He doesn't want us to take life personally. He wants us to experience life on a more elevated. These are all tools from all these holy books to help us to be more soulful in how we experience life. So you start to understand from the Musa Svarim, from the Chassidus Svarim, from all the different books that we have available in our bookstore, breastof.co.il, breastof.com, and you can order now Muna Garden of Amuna for a friend, Universal Garden of Amuna. You can order all these books and you can install inspire people to live a more life filled with a moon. It's so easy now. It's been made more and more easy. You can order it online and Kindle for $9.99 and you can learn a book online. It's not now something which, you know, you have to go out your way. You can just go onto Amazon and write Universal Garden of Muna by Rav Shalom Orish. And there it is. You can just pay $9.99 and read the whole book. You don't need to have it shipped. You don't need to wait for the delivery. You don't need to go to a bookstore. It's We're in a different kind of time right now. I'm sure at some point, thanks to Elon Musk, who we mentioned over here, will be downloading Torah. I'm not looking forward to that one, but there'll be concepts through Neuralinks and other stuff that he's planning on chips and who knows what, that you'll be able to download all of Shas, <laughs> like uh, all of all of Mishnayas, all of Sidre. I don't think it's going to Torah is going to work that way because it's a divine entity. You have to really toil. You have to learn. But the 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 reality is that the the Hashem is doing that all the time for us. He's pouring on us divine revelation. He wants us to experience spiritual life. He doesn't want us to be blocked. And it's up to us. All we have to do, and my rabbi used to say, my rabbi used to say, all we have to do is just remove that block from ourselves, remove ourselves from the situation, really. That's really what it comes down to. We want Mashiach to come, and what we're talking about, we want the Mashiach to come, Mashiach to come. We just have to remove that block ourselves from getting in the way. We're getting in the way of the light of Mashiach. The light of Mashiach is coming. The beginner says to open up the gila. Hashem is revealing. Esther and Mordechai, they sort of removed themselves and all the miracles took place. She was fasting. She was like a nobody by the end of the story. And she was so like withered and out beyond this world by that point. And yet Hashem made Chain. She found grace in everyone's eyes. She didn't have to look like the most stunning person in Hollywood or anything like that. God forbid. She was just doing Hashem's will and that provided the miracle. That's like my holy soul. I mean, she's beautiful as well, but she removes her own self to do a higher cause. That is the kind of person that you want to marry. That's the kind of person you want to become yourself, to be doing a bigger cause, a, a bigger purpose. And people here are talking about on the uh, underneath on the YouTube. Let me just see. Yeah. Can I see it? Yes. Oh, so they're writing um, the Garden of Amuna. Yes, we need to learn it. Yes, we do need to learn. Yes, the Ferdinand Petal Rose. That's also beautiful with the, the, the ideas of concepts of mercy. Yeah, very beautiful. And the Garden of Amuna, thank God, like I said, it's easy to get now. And there are lots of classes on our Breslov and, and AmunaLive.com channels where you can learn from you know, to, uh, Yonatan Galed and obviously the Rav. And it's, you know, we were praised the other day Rabbi Laser Brody for all his years that he put over here and all the other great rabbis who've been in this mostus over here and beyond. Well, you know, thank God there's Amuna now, all kinds of teachers throughout the world. Like I said, we're very into Gedalia and please God, next sharp, next Sunday, coming Amuna class, coming attractions, I'd like to get to promotion time for Mr. Goldsmith over here, that we have the opportunity to host Mendy Weinreb. Wow, what Simcha they bring to our studio, those two brothers, and there's more brothers, but the, with the two that came, they bring such Simcha with the joy, with the music, and with the sensitivity we had this week of Nuriel, this beautiful soul for music. Next week, we're getting ready for Purim, so it's perfect timing. You can see how Shem works everything out. The feed the time that many, many times we kept working out, trying to get him to come. 
and return and do a full class but it kept being blocked up because of you know the corona stories and this story and that story so now Mendy Weiner has come back a lot of energy in our studio with music please God and we're going to have Michael Ben Melech we hope from the Lighthouse Project he's also going to be zooming in as well which will be really exciting to try balance out musicians and zoom at the same time a first time for us and yes we're also going to talk about Purim for sure yes next Shabbos next Muna class is going to be on Sunday um, dedicated the addition to Purim that's going to be the focus with Rav Oresh, and we'll get into hopefully with Rav Oresh himself teaching us about Amunah and Purim you know personally I remember I was on a flight once from Nissan Black and it's a custom on Purim for breast lovers to do six hours of spodinus it's a it's such a thing I don't know if all breast lovers do it but Nissan Black did and we were on that flight and we hadn't slept for like I don't know a few weeks because we've been on the road we'd literally gone over the Pacific is the Pacific no Atlantic we've gone over the Atlantic three times in that one week and then that way back after such a week and we performed in Times Square that Saturday night before you know an opportunity to form a C team hundreds of you know hundreds of thousands, four thousand people were there two teenagers unbelievable moment and that after such a week like that with so many shows we stopped off in israel literally just to perform one show and fly back on the same night and such a week nissan black did spot it i saw in my own eyes did a spot six hours on the flight back to israel to then go and make a bris straight off the plane we flew to air on, on purim we flew into literally into make a bris on purim in yushalayim and i'd been keeping the mitzvahs of purim in miami and now i was in yushalayim with nissim and his family and my family joined us from Beitar at that time now thank god i live in jerusalem and this year it's a three-day purim so it's going to be even more powerful an opportunity for Purim Mishulish to really tap into a very big light this year. So next Sunday night, Samuna class is going to be, please God, it's going to be about Purim. And please God, my personal class the following day, it's going to be about Purim as well. The week of Purim, how can we not talk about Purim? But we're just saying right now, in this today's Amuna class, about inner healing. To understand that that's the only solution to Elon Musk's dilemma and all these other people's dilemmas. That the world, where is it heading? You know, this, this speeding up of the whole corona thing. Where are we heading? How are we healing? What's going to be the solution? It has to be one thing. The inner level, the soul level. That's the true place of healing. That's what the Rav was saying last night. We have to remember this. What he's teaching is 100% going to heal the world. It's not maybe the vaccine, the this and that, all these different medications people are coming up with. Thank God that we give thanks to everyone who's worked so hard on the physical level to come up with solutions to this crazy challenge. But we have to understand we always had one solution that's always there in every generation. And it's till Mashiach comes to heal the whole world yeah it makes me think of a mj song you know heal the world make it a better place for you and for me and the entire human race where's it going to come from it's not going to come from mj that's for sure not it's going to come from the inner truth yeah from the inner reality that inner love that inner soul that wants to bring out positive moments day after day and then you can go out into the world and become an unbelievable healer like a real true healer not a doctor because of a paycheck but because of you really want to heal people you want to inspire people you want to enliven people you want to enliven this world with positivity so i thank hashem it looks like the Wi-Fi worked, thank God. We had our YouTube feed, we had our Facebook feed, we had our podcast, we have our weekly website going on. Yes. Oh, we had also, thank God, someone noticed I put that. It was not Nissan Black's daughter. We had a Bat Smith for it. It was a friend of Nissan Black, a very good friend, who's, thank God, been involved with the Hava and the whiskey and the whole thing. So thank God we had a beautiful celebration, this Mosi Shabbos. And uh, Nissan Black was there, obviously, singing Hashem Melech. That's the kind of song we need to sing. And also we had Yosef Kaduna there, one of my favorite musicians. We would like to bring him into the studio, but for that, we need a sponsor. If anyone wants to sponsor Yosef Kaduna, it's not too too much he just needs he's at a point where he has to be paid to come even though it's revorish and thank god so far everyone else has pretty much come the chinam but um if anyone wants to sponsor yosef kaduna to come to our studio we also have shlomo katz after purim coming and we just spoke with Aiton katz he's also agreed to come the sunday before pesach uh, the 21st of march and we have one sunday available in between now and uh, pesach which is 7th of march so we're looking still to fill that um that would be the Sunday after Purim, 
because this year's Purim is on Purim Shulish, so the sun will miss one Sunday Amuna class with the Rav, but I will be giving my class on the Monday afterwards. Hopefully I won't be too hanged over, because it's also my birthday. Yes, Aiton Katz, that's right, he's coming. I just spoke with him today. So we have other people who want to come. We have to work out who exactly. I'm thinking maybe Isaac and Rubenstein, uh, there's very good talented musicians. There's a few other people interested in coming in. We definitely don't want to do Zoom as the main focus until we have to and also we don't want to not have uh, music because after Pesach it's unless Mashiach's here which we say we're, Purim is Gula Samach Gula we hope Mashiach's going to be here so we're going to have to go through the sphere of our music but if we do have no Mashiach God forbid then we have to have teachers so then we have a list of rabbis thank God who are definitely interested in joining us for this anyway there's a lot of good content thank God you guys are being very supportive we appreciate it keep sharing it keep bringing out this love get ready for Purim and, Pe- and Pesach with a lot of joy Mishanik has had a Marvin Basimcha that's coming from inside the soul level yes and please God the borders will open up that would be amazing if they open up um, I heard from some politicians it's looking like after Pesach which is crazy but there's a lot of political reasons and hopefully good reasons they have I hope we're, we're praying that they're being legit with us and not just doing this for their own agendas but it seems like we'll be have to be patient because I have my family to visit in London and I'm sure there's lots of people who need to get out I need to get out I need to get on that plane I have this in black Pesach tour yeah there's things going on we got to get out of this country but at the same time we've got to be able to come back home to this country everyone needs to return back Kibbutz Goliath back to the Holy Land anyway thank you for watching thank you for tuning in please God all these problems will go away very soon and all these challenges, but remember that it's going to come from that inner place of healing. Tune into the soul this week with Truma. Tune into the Mishkan. The, each home is a Mishkan. We have our Cholas on our table, like the Lechem Ponim. We have the Menorah, the candles, the Shabbos Licht. We have our home, our, our intimate place, like the Aaron Kodesh, and, and the Sram Shafa with all the books. We have the Aaron Kodesh. We have the Baruch Hashem, the beautiful smell of the Besomim. We make a Meremah named Besomim to bring a beautiful Nachzruch positive atmosphere in our home we have the Mizbech all the food we're eating the table the Shulchan in our house you have to understand all these things are alive Yiddishkeit is alive spirituality is alive our home is a Mikdash Ma'at is a temple and every Shabbos we get to go in there and experience the inner world the seventh dimension the seventh day the seventh level within go within and bring that outwards into the eighth level which brings everything back to Mashiach please go where everything in the whole technological revolution will be elevated and everything we're doing will see spirituality Amen thanks for tuning in share this on and wishing you all a beautiful week thank you so much oh one more thing before I go I am putting out, please God, Erev Purim, United Souls number two. It's a collaboration album. We already had United Souls number one. We're going to be putting out United Souls number two. You guys can check it out. Enod of Vado means there's nothing else but Hashem, someone else. So it means that it's the revelation of how the true nothing, which is Hashem, because we see him as nothing, we we think we're something, we start to understand that he's the true something. I wrote about this in my book and this concept. You can see below, uh, I didn't put the exact quote about it, but uh, it's coming attractions for my book. This concept of the true something is Hashem, and we're the true nothing. That's the understanding of Ein Mon Bavado, and that will be revealed very soon. And in, throughout the Megillah, it's very clear that that's one of the ideas of the crown and the Melech, the Kesa of Malucha, of, of Purim, is a big revelation on Purim of such a level of Enon Mavado and it's an opportunity for us when we get a little bit Lachayim's to experience that we, we go out of our, our self a little bit and we experience the true oneness anyway so I'm putting out a collaboration out of United Souls number two and it's the last day today for anyone who wants to send in a track so tomorrow I'm going to be already uploading it so if you have any musicians or friends who have a music that's a bit unity focused send it to me and Erev Purim will be promoting it please God the United Souls number no. 2 will be an opportunity to have another collaboration album of great artists thank you from the LA or from UK from everywhere from all the people that are watching in and keep sharing Amuna with the world Amen thank you